Yo, what is going on guys? Winter Kills here and welcome back to the first locals feature match on the channel for I think like maybe about a little over a month or so, five weeks. Um, yeah, locals were closed down a little while uh, due to the pandemic, um, but they have reopened uh, in a timely manner, which is really awesome. Feels good to be back recording matches, playing in locals. One deck, one month will be back as well soon enough, as soon as I can get myself to stop playing speedroids. Uh, whenever that'll happen. Um, but uh, we have my friend Alex here on the left playing Trick Stars, actually. You guys have seen him on the channel a lot before playing the Tri Brigade Leerlust deck. Um, and he's sort of switching gears, obviously, post ban list. And my friend Joe on the right. You guys normally know him as the Prank Kid Aficionado. Uh, literally comes to locals and dusts every single one of us playing Prank Kids, but he's mixing it up playing the other PK deck, the Phantom Knight strategy. So. We'll see my friend Alex here win the die roll on the left, starting with Candina, and Candina is going to go ahead and search a copy of the Light Stage. And uh, fun fact, uh, I think Trickstar is one of his favorite decks of all time. I think it's uh, a deck that he got one. He, he, he's more than likely to correct me in the uh, the comments, but I think he got his like first invite playing this deck as well. Um, he does have the ulti Light Garissa, so you gotta love to see that. So we're gonna see Corobane. And then we're going to see Lycoris activating to go ahead and bounce the Corbane back to the hand. And then we're going to see a Link 2, not for a Trickstar Link 2, no, an even better Trickstar Link 2, known as Predator Plant Verte Anaconda, Trickstar Verte Anaconda. And he's going to go ahead and pay 2,000. And uh, I believe it does go uninterrupted here. And this is, um, like, one of the kind of the cheesy things about the Trickstar engine in the current meta is that it makes Anaconda really easily. Um, seen a lot of people in our locals, especially, um, one in particular that loves to play Dragoon Fusion Destiny Turbo decks, and he uses the Trickstar engine to great effect to do that. And I always find it funny that people don't want Terratop to come back to 3 because of its Link 2 engine, but here's the Trickstar engine pretty much doing the same thing, uh, allowing you to climb into, uh, you know, Anaconda for the free. We'll see him set one back row, and I believe he, our opponent is going to take a look at the Corobane. I believe that's Corobane. And uh, he will go ahead and pass turn. So, returning the uh, Corbane back to the hand with the Lycoris is kind of nice for follow up. Um, not only is that a, a bit of follow up as well, but it's also a nice discard, I guess, uh, if he needs it for Dragoon. Uh, but we're going to see our PK player lead with a copy of Tour Guide into Psychic Wielder. No effect of Tour Guide, obviously. Otherwise, I think you'd probably auto lose to a Dragoon negate there. And we're going to see him just sneakily go into. A little breaksword play here. No effect, obviously. And this is obviously all to just go ahead and try to get access to Zeus. Downard Zeus is going to give him a nice little four material Zeus. And uh, it's got to put his opponent on having two negates here. He's going to attach the Downard and the Wielder here. And just basically stealth mode Zeus, just like that. Dodging the negate at every possible corner. But his opponent does have the Imperm. And that is going to force the second Zeus. Uh, and then obviously Dragoon will chain. Uh, to negate and destroy and gain that thousand attack and our PK player unfortunately uh, is dealing what most people hate about Dragoon um, is just how good it is it's just such a dominating force on the field um, you really need a select few cards to get rid of it Zeus was definitely one of them but his opponent did have the Imperm um, yeah now we're going to see a Candina into Lily Bell um, and uh, imagine we're just going to see him start swinging here um yeah, so battle phase, he'll go in for 18, uh, I think 2,000 since the uh, light stage is up, and then another, I think, 1,000 or so from the uh, Lily Bell, and then we'll see him activate, or we'll add back Lycoris, uh, activating Lycoris here in the hand, and going to return the Candina, that's a nice little starter for next turn as well, and Candina will swing in, uh, putting him down to 38, and only for Dragoon to attack in uh, for 4,000, which is going to be game, so... As much as I really like that Zeus play um, right there at the beginning, it was not successful in outing that Dragoon there. And uh, honestly, even if it did out the Dragoon, I don't know what our PK player was doing past uh, Zeus Pass. So, But it's definitely better than nothing. Uh, but we're in game two here, and uh, our PK player is going to normal summon Cloak, link into Almirage, interestingly enough, and we're going to see a Lancey on the summon of the Almirage. And that's just going to be a turn skip. Um, yeah, that's really, really rough. I don't really see the Almirage in too many builds of PK, but I definitely see why you would play it for situations like this. If you don't open up super well, 
Um, you know, he lands, he, he passed, and now we're going to see Ash pass on the uh, Red Ice Fusion, but he's so good, he's got another Lancia, and this is really rough, but as I was saying, like, you know, the Al Mirage play can give you access to nice follow-up. If you do see something like Cloak, you can get a Torn Scales for next turn and put your opponent on OTK or put up a massive board because you do get lots of follow-up there. Um, and then I think we're going to see, I think this card is, like, called Trickstar Festival, I think. It just summons two tokens. Um, I could be wrong in the name, but I know it summons two tokens, and that's going to allow him to link into the Trickstar Link 2, uh, which we typically, I mean, at least I've never really seen summon before, uh, because every time I've played against Trickstar, it's always just been, like, used as a Link 2 engine. I believe this is the Trickstar Holly Angel. It says, each time a Trickstar monster or monsters is normal or special summon to his own, this card points to inflict 200 damage to your opponent. Uh, and Trickstar Monsters, this card points to cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect. So he'll burn for 200. Uh, and then we're going to see him attempt to go to the battle phase here. And uh, we're going to see Fogblade on Almirage. And uh, that is going to basically prevent his opponent from swinging in whatsoever. And uh, his opponent will also, I believe, take 200 damage from the Lycoris as well. Because his opponent added a card from his deck to his hand. Um, yeah. Each time a card is added uh, to your opponent's hand, inflict 200 damage to them. And now we're going to see our PK player here lead with a tour guide. Uh, hoping there's no Lancey here, because he's had two in a row. And tour guide is successfully going to go ahead and summon the graph from the deck. And that extra monster zone is clogged up right now by the Almirage, but of course he could use its effect to go ahead and protect something like tour guide. If he really wanted to go into Cherubini, but of course he could just go into Cherubini in the main monster zone if he wants to. And we'll see him activate the graph. Uh, the only thing that's rough here, uh, or no, no graph effect. I was going to say, that was the only thing that's rough about this particular zone placement, is that he can't use graph because he won't have a Cherubini zone to summon to. But he still will use Cherubini to go ahead and dump the, uh, the Torn Scales, and then he's going to activate the Cloak. That's going to search Boots. He'll burn for another 200 there, uh, since a card was added from the deck to the hand, and the, uh, Holly Angel, I believe, will go ahead and gain more, um, more attack. And now we're going to see the Torn Scales get summoned here. And I believe he added these Silent Boots to hand. So we've got, you know, the PK engine pretty much rolling here. We're going to see him activate Torn Scales, pitching a Fog Blade now. Go ahead and dump another PK name to the graveyard. And it looks like he's going to go ahead and dump the gloves. So as it stands, he could easily get into a Break Sword right now. And he could also climb up into Rusty as well to keep going. Um... I don't know if I don't know if there's potentially enough gas here to go for an OTK, but you might be able to put up a really really solid board um, as is. So we're gonna see him go for a rank three. Could either be Levier here or Break Sword, um, but clearing that link two is probably a good idea. So he's gonna go ahead and use the Break Sword, popping the Fog Blade and the Holly Angel, and. Uh, from here, you can go ahead and make the Rusty if he wants to. That'll put another Fog Blade in Grave for an Extender. And also putting the Break Sword in Grave as well uh, for more removal. He wants to go ahead and Fog Blade that back out. And Rusty, I mean, he's already used... He hasn't used Boots in hand right now. Um, but he could use Glove to dump Wings. Uh, and then he has basically a double monster born in the Grave with the uh, Fog Blade and the Wings. Go ahead and apply more pressure. We're just going to see him dump another cloak, mainly just for follow-up probably here, since I, I don't think there's another name he really can get benefit right now from dumping outside of boots. So I think that's the only name, apart from the gloves, that he's not used yet. So Rusty is going to dump a cloak, setting a fog blade, and then we're going to see him. Looks like he wants to activate this fog blade here. Easily bring out the break sword, triggering Rusty's other effect to pop the Lycoris. It looks like he is going to use the fog blade. And he still does have that boots in hand, so we can still see him make another rank three, but looks like he's going to go ahead and link two here into Verte Anaconda. Okay, I was not expecting this route, but we are going to see a, a Nibiru drop here. Um, I don't know if he had enough gas for it, but he could have probably gone for like a Levier into Dante, into F-Zero, into Utopic Draco, uh, and forced the Nibiru there before continuing any further. I don't know, because um, I know he had the Fog Blades in Grave, he had the boots in hand... Um, I don't know if you can make any type of recovery play there, but definitely you want a Nibiru on the summon of that uh, green snake. You do not want to let that Fusion Destiny resolve, because that is going to hurt quite a bit. 
We're going to see Boots activate, though, in Grave here, grabbing a copy of Wings, and he is going to pass on that, but we know he at least has two Fog Blades, I believe, um, and also that Wings, too, which he can actually come in clutch to protect the token here, deciding on the uh, zone and position of the token. Defense middle classic uh, position for Nib Tokens. Uh, and then we're going to see our Trickstar player here, Normal Summon the Lily Bell. And I believe Lily Bell can attack directly, which does come up sometimes uh, when you are on very, very low life, uh, which is uh, kind of a scary thing. But we're going to see a Fog Blade on Lily Bell. And looks like he's just trying to go battle phase here, it seems. And he is going to use Wings on the Nibiru token, uh, making it so it cannot be destroyed once, I believe. And uh, at this point... There is opportunity here. There are two monsters on the field. You guys know this. There are two monsters on our Trickstar player's field here, um, which means he could go for a Verte Anaconda uh, into a Dragoon, but we're going to see our PK player now activate here in the end phase, or perhaps in main phase two, uh, whichever comes first. And he's just going to uh, summon out Rusty and then summon out Breaksword, and that's going to pop the Nibiru, ensuring that he gets his two uh, bodies out in the field. Uh, you know, for the start of the turn, getting that Rusty out there, making sure he can use Fog Blades Graveyard Effect come his turn again, and also clear the two monsters threat on the board, uh, you know, denying him access to something like Anaconda. And that cloak that was dumped last turn, a little bit of a preempt preemptive uh, uh, send off the Rusty coming in clutch now to go ahead and banish the search copy of Boots. And he also has Torn Scales engraved, so that will trigger, of course. And he's going to go ahead and spec the Boots. And I think we've seen two breaks, or no, we haven't seen two breaks, or unless he's playing three. Yeah, no, he hasn't. We, ha we haven't seen two breaks, or yet. But the, this, this last break, or here, the second copy, will signal the end of the game. We're on to a game three. Uh, and as we get this game three underway, I'd like to mention a quick shout out to Imperium Duelist, guys. Definitely check them out in the link below if you haven't already. They just came out with brand new Demon Slayer themed over sleeves for double sleeving, brand new water themed deck box with the water attribute on it, nice blue color scheme with the white interior. And tons of new play mats as well. Check them out at the link below. And their new Pegasus sleeves also for competitive play. And definitely do not forget to check out the affiliate links I have to TCG Player and the Coldest Water down in the description below. Respectfully, if you guys shop and check out using those links, a small bit of the revenue from your purchase will go right back into the channel and helps out a ton. So getting back to the game here, we're going to see our Trickstar player not open up too stellar here. Setting one and passing. And we're going to see our PK player lead with Twin Twister. Pitching Seer. Um... And we'll see what this set is. Could be like a reincarnation if he's thinking about chaining it. I'd imagine it's like the only chainable trap right now. Definitely not Imperm, because if it was Imperm, it would have been sent already at this point, since there's obviously no targets for Imperm to negate. So he's going to go ahead and fire the reincarnation here. And uh, our opponent does have Ash for it, uh, which does stop the reincarnation. And that could be pretty nasty if he had something like Droll in hand as well. Uh, especially at the start of the turn, because PK... Typically doesn't search much, but if you can droll them really early, whether they're playing the uh, Adventurer engine or with something like Reincarnation triggering the droll, it can actually be pretty detrimental because it can turn off things like Cloak, um, and it can also turn off things like Boots. Um, but outside that, really doesn't stop too much. That's why droll is not really crazy against this deck, unless there's some outside factor where you can droll them earlier, in this case Reincarnation, um, or playing the Adventurer token stuff. So he will still go ahead and burn the Droll here on the Resolution of Cloak, and it's going to force our PK player to go ahead and pass turn here. Maybe he just didn't open up that well, because we see him go for that same play again, linking the Cloak into the Almirage, and then just searching a Torn Scales for next turn. We're going to see a Mystic Mind get slapped down here, and that's going to uh, put the game in a little bit of a stalemate. PK draws and passes. Trickstar draws and decides it's time to go ahead and fire the light stage one turn later here it's going to add a copy of candina and he could also go ahead and lock down this back row if you would like with the light stage it's other effect that does come in very clutch we will see him normal summon candina candina effect will trigger here and i i assume if there's no uh visual cue of him activating the other effect of light stage i imagine there was a verbal cue of him activating it um because i feel like yeah, or, or he's just going to go battle phase here. Go over the Almirage, get in for some damage, and then activate Lycoris in the battle phase to return the Candina. Swing in for another 18. And then Etelli here. 
And this is going to go ahead and special summon out a Ghost Ogre. Yeah, pretty much everybody's favorite e Tally target, too. Another thing about, like, Terror Top and, like, Link 2 engines. Like, think how much, like, Ghost Ogre is being splashed now for things like Halk and, you know, just generic Link fodder. Like, bring my boy Terror Top back. I mean, I'm just going to keep saying it, but, uh, yeah. Sorry about the tangent, but I just have to. I just have to bring it up. I just have to. All these free extenders in the game and no Terror Top at 3 makes me sad. But hopefully it'll come back with an errata. Anyways, getting back to the game. We're going to see him go ahead into the Anaconda. And uh, this is going to resolve. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty good position to be in if you are the Trickstar player right now. Trickstar Engine, sure. Coming in clutch of putting two monsters on the field to make Anaconda. And um, yeah, like, uh, I mean, we saw the Ash get forced on a reincarnation. We're going to see a Called by the Grave now on a Droll and Lockbird. Interesting that he's just going to go ahead and preemptively call by the grave the Droll. That's not something I really would have expected. I mean, maybe there's a pretty good reason behind using the call by there uh, on the Droll preemptively, because maybe you're, you don't think he'll use the Dragoon Negate here. Um, yeah, I don't know. But uh, either way, it's up to our PK player now to try to out this Dragoon, and it looks like with that hand, he will not be able to do it. Dasher, Nib, Torn Scales, and Imperm certainly not going to cut it here. So we will see Trickstar take the match 2-1, yeah, and with Nib, Ash, Talents in hand. Yeah, that's a tall order, but uh, if you guys want to see more of my content, click on one of the videos popping up on the bottom of the screen right now. And last but not least, a special shout-out goes to our Divine Level channel members, and they are Tweeters0226, Ponystar, Cadillacs84, Keith Scissors, and Black Ninja Money. Thank you guys so much, as always, for your extremely generous support of the channel.